Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Another unboxing. It is birthday month. We're counting down the days to the birthday. It's almost there. Uh, I'm excited, but at the same time, kind of depressed because, you know, birthday is always like a double-edged sword. No, that's the wrong terminology because I guess there's pleasure in there. Well, you know, somebody would enjoy this. Or anyway, let's not go into that direction. I would just say there's a pleasant side to birthdays and an unpleasant side to birthdays, and I'm just going to cut it at that. I'm wearing this shirt. For those of you who love Stanley Kubrick and love horror movies will know that this is the pattern of the carpet of the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, we love you. We love you so much. I love this one. And just a couple of weeks ago, The Shining celebrated its 40th birthday. So I'm a bit late wearing this shirt, but for those of you who know me, follow me on my Instagram channel. Instagram channel? Really? Is it now an Instagram channel? On my Instagram. Super Deco all spelled together. You know my obsession with The Shining. So, the labyrinth, for those of you who know The Shining will also know that there is a labyrinth in the movie. Uh, the book is a slightly different story, Stephen King's book. Also love Stephen King, but I do prefer the movie to the book. Anyway, um, that labyrinth is kind of what I'm in right now in terms of what's going on here with my unboxings and Chanel and my birthday and everything. So, I'm lost in the labyrinth of my own obsessions, basically. That's what it is. Feel free to judge me. Doesn't matter. It's 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 my way of coping with this whole situation. We're in this year is a very very different type of year. Let's just put it that way. Um, so you'll understand what I'm talking about the second I start getting into it. What's the up? Okay. So this is the up part and this is the bottom part. So we have this beautifully plissé folded um, tissue paper which we can hear. ASMRing a little bit for you. So we have this kind of harmonica looking plissé paper. Let's put it there. And then we have the box. This is kind of hard to get. Oh no, now you saw what it is. Well, actually, you know what it is already because I'll put it in the thumbnail. Or should I? I don't know. I'll think about it. Thumbnails always come after the actual shooting of the video, obviously. So, as you can see from the box, check out the other <laughs> unboxings I've done in the past days, really. Uh, this is not a box that contains a bag. It's a type of box that contains shoes. And we get two shoe pouches to protect the shoes that are in here. Hmm. Now, you've seen me unbox... <laughs> Let's get to the camera. You've seen me unbox the beige slingbacks and um, actually check out the unboxing of the beige slingbacks in the card section up above, but also in the description box underneath this video. I just lost the plastic bit. So sometimes with the shoe, they give you these little plastic stretchers, whatever, to hold the slings and shapes. So this is how they are. They're like little magic wands. Harry Potter, I'm coming for you with my Chanel magic wand. Ah, lost my magic wand, obviously. Okay, so, but these, haha, there's a difference here uh, to the ones that I unboxed. As you can see, no matter where I put these slingbacks, they never shine off light. They don't bounce off light like my other beige slingbacks. They don't have a shine to them. They absorb light. Why? They're mattified. Why? Because they're in suede. The other beige slingbacks are in goat skin and they're glossy. They're not patent, but they're glossy. It's a glossy leather. But this, my ideas, is suede and it's not goat skin. We have calf skin and suede. So of course, I gotta cover my face for you to be able to see the shoe properly because otherwise it won't focus. So you can see the suede effect here, no matter how you touch them. Okay, so this is just amazingly beautiful. It's a 42C. It's the biggest size they produce. And you know, I've been mentioning in my other videos, it's really hard for me to find the size because it is the biggest size Chanel produces. It's also my size. I can squish into a 41 with softer materials, but 42 is really the comfortable size. It's 
By the way, with the sling bags, just a tip for you. I know a lot of people love to buy them so that the heel just kind of ends really at the border of of the heel of, that your foot heel ends at the border of the heel of the shoe but it shouldn't you always need a little bit of space there so don't kind of buy a shoe where you're kind of like flowing over like a cookie dough over the shoe you shouldn't and a lot of people do that technically you shouldn't do whatever you want with your money and with your feet and with your shoes but it's actually more elegant when you have a little bit of space back there so with a 41 i lose that space but in some cases, um, if a 42 is missing or maybe in some colorways isn't even produced or whatever, then what are you going to do if you fall in love with the shoe? You can still cope with it. So it does allow you, what I want to say, the sling bags do allow you to play between two sizes. The only thing that I cannot handle is the width difference. Now, I've mentioned this in my other videos. This is a 42C. You see the C underneath there. That's the wider version. That means that this is, there's also a B, width B, which is a bit tighter half a centimeter and then you have the width c which is the widest version so 41 c is still okay but 42 c is perfect why suede first of all i know it's super delicate but uh i wanted to have an assortment of i'm obsessed with sling with chanel slingbacks in this particular period actually i've been always obsessed with them but i never went there until now many reasons for that unfortunately one of those reasons being, and now, how to put this delicately, there's been a price increase, you guys, in shoes, and in particular, sling bags. So let's, let's address the situation, or the elephant in the room. It has been brought to my attention. Now, this is a coincidental thing, by the way. Otherwise, I would have made a video long ago just um, announcing this, or touching base on this, or uh, referring to this issue of the price increase of Chanel shoes. I would have done it a long while ago. I didn't know. That's the problem. That's why I didn't do it. And actually, while I was filming the unboxing of the other two slingbacks, I still had no clue that a price increase was coming. But the price increase, 29th of June, is when it hits. 29th of June, 5, 5.5% is a markup. So uh, you could say it's not much. So anyway, what happens is these from the 29th of June are going to go up in price 40 euro. The slingbacks already received a price increase about uh, half a year ago or a year ago or a year and a half ago. I mean, it's a bit complicated. I don't really remember. Time is just like so bizarre. For the whole concept of time right now, <laughs> since we're in isolation and lockdown is super bizarre. Anyway, um, they received a 3% more or less markup, which was around 20 uh, euro last time around now now we're talking 40 euro price increase that is a 5.5 percent markup uh that's a lot um considering that the last one was 20 now we're upping them 40 euro so in dollars i think that's going to be probably around 50. um so anyway once <laughs> i heard about the price increase I was like, darn, the second I really obsess about something from Chanel, it's like it's like they have antennas listening to me wherever they wherever I am, whatever I'm talking about, and they just like, ah, Jacob is going nuts about this product. Let's up the price. I mean, what else? How it's conspiracy theory. There you go. That's the best conspiracy theory I could offer you. Quite frankly, though, um I don't know. I, it's you know, we just had the bags increased in price on the eleventh of May, and that was really irritating. But they had the excuse of saying, you know, Chanel said some of their CEOs spoke in an interview and said that they were planning this price increase before the lockdown, before the whole situation the world is in right now. So give them the benefit of the doubt. OK, but now just like a month and a half later on the 29th of June, you're increasing again, this time shoes. What's next? You know, of course, they're going to increase apparel. They're going to increase uh, accessories as well. It's all kind of. Many brands are doing it. However, before we go and attack, uh, you know, uh, Chanel for their increasing the prices, yada, yada, I do have to say one great thing about what they did do. Chanel is one of those rare brands, if not the only one, really, the only major brand that did not take any help from the government to pass through this issue. And, and they did not cut salaries to their workers, sales associates and everybody. 
they did not uh, send anybody on unemployment money or whatever. They paid all of their workers full salary, even though they were not working at all. And still to date, they're paying them in full, even though they're working in shifts. So let's say you have a five day a week contract, but now you're just working three days because there's less people in the shop. So you're working in different shifts. You're still being paid five days. So Chanel is really doing that. So I got to hand it to them. Kudos to you, Chanel, for really taking care of your workers. I think that is very commendable and amazing. What is the downside of this? The downside is that the consumer ends up paying in part for the loss. So the markup in prices kind of tries to <laughs> collect the money that was damaged. You know, the, the collateral damages are basically the price increases. Now, you could say, well, but that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. Or you could say you don't have to buy Chanel. If you're, yeah, you don't have to for sure. But let me tell you one more thing. A lot of other brands who have fired people, who didn't pay their people full salaries, even though they sent them, you know, home for because the situation we're in, uh, and uh, saved money that way and fired a lot of people and closed down stores and uh, literally shut them down, not just for a certain period of time, but literally like stopped paying rent for those stores and just completely closed stores, stores that will not reopen after the situation is over. Even those brands are upping their prices. So in a way, they're, they're all upping their prices. The good ones and the bad ones. So for me, Chanel in this case falls into the department of the good ones. However, since I have this obsession with these shoes now, and it was so rare for me to find the 42 C in all of these colorways and materials that I wanted, since I found them now, I was like, okay, I'm not going to wait. So I'm not going to wait another month or two to get them. Why? When I have them now, and I might have to reorder them and they might have to take a long time to arrive because my size is not readily available almost ever. So the idea was just buy them now. Yes, it's a splurge, but then I see it this way. Well, from the next price increase, I mean, from the 29th of June, uh, which is basically by the time you're going to be seeing this video, it will be the 29th of June. It's like I saved already 40, 40, 50 bucks on them. Uh, so yeah, it was a no brainer to me. Um, they were going to end up in my collection anyway. So there you have it. If we're going to touch base quickly also on the topic of, and I've touched base since you might just see this video without having seen my other Slingback unboxing videos. And we let's touch base to the topic of men and high heels. Now, I mentioned this before, but in history, the high heels were invented for men. Women started wearing them much later on. So see it this way. It's all about a mental state. It's about how you position yourself in freeing your mind. You should wear what's comfortable for you. You should wear what feels correct for you. I know a lot of us tend to end up thinking, what will the neighbor think? What will people outside think? What will people at school think? What will people at work think? What will people in the subway think? What will people in the bus think? What will people on the sidewalk think? What will people in the supermarket think? We just spend so much time thinking about what others are thinking of us, and we miss the whole point of actually thinking for ourselves about ourselves, which is the only important thing in life, because at the end of the day, our lives are limited. You're gonna croak sooner or later. And then what? Earth will swallow you up and it's the end of you. And that's it. And nobody's going to care about whether or not somebody thought something about you in the supermarket or wherever at work or it doesn't matter. Be happy. Enjoy life as much as you can. And I'm saying this also because I'm in a psychological state, you know, because it's my birthday month and um. I just want things to get to a point where, you know, I'm analyzing, I'm very analytical. I always am of life and death, but it's so important to always acknowledge that when you're making decisions about things you really love. I, I support this brand. You know, I love Chanel. I'm going to love Chanel no matter what happens, un unless they don't do something really terrible, obviously. But uh, I support the brand because it's locally produced, more or less. I mean, it is made in Europe and... Prices are high because they pay their people the right amount. And the style is timeless. Chanel designed this shoe in 1957. First, it had a thinner heel. Then it developed a thicker heel in the 60s. Then they were discontinued somewhere in the mid-late 70s. Uh, and truth be told, Karl Lagerfeld brought them back just a couple of years ago. In this classic 60s form, they were brought back, some of you might remember, the Brasserie collection. Now, um, let's just fade in the picture here or a couple of images. I'll see what I can find so that you can see that collection. Uh, it is a Pret-a-Porter collection and this slingback appears for the first time there. 
So since so that was around 2014, 15, I have to double check. And since then, this shoe has been in production. It has become an iconic staple of Chanel, of, of the DNA of Chanel style. So what does this mean? This means that the slingback will be in production for many, many years to come. Things always change, you know. Of course, it was in production in the 50s and 60s, then it was discontinued, then it came back. The 255 bag wasn't in production always since it came out in 1955. It also had a discontinuation period, and then Lagerfeld brought it back. So you never know. Things might get discontinued again. But within the memory, a pattern of the, the memory of a DNA, of, of the style of DNA of a brand, these shoes are as iconic as the 255 bag, as the camellia flower, as a brooch or with putting it into hair, as is the Chanel chain, the intertwined chain, but also the chain at the bottom, the hem of the jackets. So needless to say, these never go on sale. Chanel does do sales twice a year, summer and in winter. Uh, by the way, right now, as I'm talking to you, sales are happening going on at Chanel. Shoes are reduced, seasonal shoes, not the slingbacks. This is a classic shoe that will never go on sale. So in terms of the Fashion Bunker archives, you know, I collect fashion and, I'm, and I collect Chanel. This is a very important shoe uh, for me and for my collection, whether I'll be just wearing it for photos or actually out and about, that's a different story. Uh, but just having it, analyzing it, the shape, the cut, the trim, the materials is amazing. Now I have a third material ready because the beige ones are goatskin, these are suede, calfskin, and then I have lambskin, the gold ones from the Métier de uh, Paris slash Egypt slash New York collection. There's more materials out there, and we're going to get to them sooner rather than later, but stay tuned for that. I'm not going to say much more. Um, but let's take this out so we see it also. The whole, so you see the inside is completely leather. The, up, no, where am I going? the upper inside and the bottom, they're just completely covered in leather. And we have the Gros Grand front. A little ASMR. And then we have this suede. It's like powder. It's almost like the suede. I mean, the bottom is, is a very soft suede too. Look how clean and beautiful, pristine, new, untried they are. I love that. Super, super clean. So it's a collectible per se. I would not go crazy on a seasonal piece. I mean, it's, very rarely do I find nowadays design within brands that are innovative and brand new and have the potential of becoming iconic. I I usually find that in, in past models and models from, from the heritage of a brand. So it's kind of hard to go for me to go nuts for something and buy it in all colorways and materials um, if it doesn't have really hardcore history that speaks to me in the background, as does this shoe. So there's many reasons to, to purchase it and buy it. Oh, another thing, the suede was the first material brought back by Lagerfeld in the Brasserie collection that I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Uh, they first came, were brought back by Carl in suede. So this is the original re-rendition of the shoe, if you may. And after that, of course, we started seeing the tweeds, the silks, the variation of leathers. I'm not sure if since 2015 we have had before Chanel decided to discontinue reptile skins, if there was an alligator or some lizard version, I, I do not know because I'm never into that type of leather anyway. Um, I've never purchased any crocodiles, alligators or uh, lizards of any kind. Uh, it just takes it too far for me. To me, in my mind, I, I mean, I know there's people we're touching territories now, super politically incorrect, right? Because YouTube today seems like you say something half a sentence wrong and you're canceled. But let's touch base on this uh, for a second. Um, there are vegans, vegetarians, and all eaters, or in some cases, some people eat only meat. But I'm I'm the mixed version. I love vegetables. I also love meat. Not all meats, mind you. Uh, however, I balance it out. I try to eat as less meat as possible. I do need meat for my diet in particular. But let's say one-fifth is meat-based and four-fifths of my diet are plant-based. But I do mix it up. And in terms of shoes, jackets, or whatever, gloves made out of leather, um, I do have this philosophy that I purchase what I eat, <laughs> not what I wouldn't eat. So um, I would eat a cow. Um, I, I would eat, you know, goat. I would drink goat milk. Um, and uh, I would eat lamb. 
So in a way, then I can accept that skin. I would never eat a lizard. I would never eat an alligator or crocodile. Um, I know some people do, but I, I wouldn't. So I don't go there, even with the leathers, especially also because they're rare and such. But this is kind of in my mind, maybe it's just my weird way of dealing morally with it. I don't know. Everybody has their own. But since I was a kid, I mean, I, you know, I was raised eating meat, so I would never questioned it. Uh, all of this moral aspect came later on in my life and in our society. So now it is a bigger topic, bigger than it ever was before. But I still would buy leather and I still eat meat. So that's that. I will uh, definitely wear the shoes as well for you on some photos. I know we've been talking about this in the other videos. I have not uh, made those photos yet. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Yes, I will be wearing them. Will I be wearing them on a regular basis out and about? Probably not. I mean, they're to me, first and foremost, sculptural pieces and super important also to analyze how they're constructed, how they're made, to see the details and how leather reacts. By the way, I have tried all of them on, obviously, before purchasing them. The softest ones, the softest ones to wear, this is a huge buying point, actually, is the suede. They stretch, you see them when you put them on the foot, they open up so more than the others, they're not as stiff. So when you put them on, on the foot, they're just completely soft. So there you have it, guys. Huge reason to purchase suede by Chanel shoes in any case. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you have, please do subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm also on Patreon, Super Dick Ball Spelled Together. And I also have two new Instagram profiles. One is Coco Chanel is in my house and the other one is Coco Chanel Privé. Check those out as well, all spelled together. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.